This presentation is going to discuss using Shapley values for data valuation. So what is data valuation? Well, in general, it's just how much data is worth. In the case of machine learning, it can be thought of how much data contributes to a specific model. And this is model and task specific. Data that might be really important to one model or one task may not be important to a different model. So why do we care about data valuation? One reason is that it can give us a way to equitably compensate people for their data. In the age of machine learning and big data, we're constantly collecting data from people, and we need to make sure that we are compensating them correctly, especially whenever this comes to very personal or medical data. Another reason is that this can give insights into the model. It can show what sort of data the model values and what sort of data the model may be finding difficult. So I want to look at a quick example of this. So let's say that we are building an object detector and we're crowdsourcing some data and these three individuals are contributing pictures of their dogs. So maybe we run a data valuation method and these four pictures are given data values that are really high. So maybe we look at those high value pictures and we notice that they're all dogs that are inside. So maybe the model had been overfitting to dogs that were outside and overfitting to the background artifacts. So adding images of dogs inside has helped the model generalize. Maybe the data valuations gives really low data values to these two images, and we look at those and their dogs that are un in unusual positions. So it might make sense that these would have low values because they're kind of outlier points. So we might want to collect more data of dogs in unusual positions to help the model generalize. Maybe these images are selected as having really extreme data values. And we can look at these, and they're all dogs wearing clothes, costumes, sweaters, bandanas. So maybe the model has been having a hard time generalizing these, and so we need to collect more data of dogs in costumes. Maybe we're not really interested, maybe our application isn't going to matter about dogs with costumes, and so we want to just remove those so that the model performs better. To look at Shapley values for a data evaluation, first we have to look at coalitional game theory, where Shapley values were initially introduced. So in coalitional game theory, you have a set of players N, and these players participate in a game V that produces some total value V of N, where V is just a set function that takes some subset of N and produces a real value. So the idea behind Shapley values is to give equitable payouts to players. So given a set of players N and a game V, how should the value of the game V of N be distributed back among the players? Lloyd Shapley, when he came up with these values in 1953, wanted them to have certain equitability properties. These properties included symmetry, which meant that if the value of S union I is equal to the value of S union J for all subsets S and N, then phi I of V, the Shapley value for player I over game V, should be equal to phi I of J over game V. So this says that if two players contribute the same amount to every subset, then their Shapley values should be the same. Another property is efficiency. This states that if we sum over all players i and n, then the sum of those Shapley values should be equal to the value of n. Similar to efficiency is the null player, so that the value of s union i is equal to the value of s for all subsets s and n, 
then the Shapley value of i of the game v should equal zero. So this says that if a player never contributes to any subsets, then its Shapley value should be zero. The last property I'm going to talk about is additivity, which says for any two games v and w, phi i of the game v plus w should equal phi i of the game v plus phi i of the game w. So Lloyd Shapley defined the Shapley value phi i of the game v to be the sum over all subsets s in n minus i of the size of s factorial times n minus the size of s minus 1 factorial over n factorial times the value of s union i minus the value of s. And that first term with the factorials can be written as a combination. It is exactly equal to 1 over n times 1 over n minus 1, choose the size of s. So phi i can then be written as 1 over n times the sum of s, all subsets s and n minus i of 1 over n minus 1, choose the size of s, times the value of s union i minus the value of s. And this makes it a little bit clearer to see the intuition behind this. You can see the second term where the values are subtracted looks at the marginal contribution of player i to all subsets. And then the first term weights these differences to be inversely proportional to the number of subsets of the same size. So moving on to data Shapley, we need to establish a few definitions. We can say A is going to be a learning algorithm that takes a training set and produces a predictor. V of S is the performance metric for the predictor produced by A trained on the data set S. And this can be any performance metric. The authors suggest using test accuracy. D is the fixed training set and phi i is the data Shapley value for player i. So to use Shapley values for data evaluation, we can apply the ideas of Shapley values where the players are the data points and the value function is the machine learning performance metric. Why might we wanna do this? Shapley values have equitability properties. And so using the Shapley values equation with data maintains those equitability properties. And this is something that other data valuation methods like leave one out don't have. So a data Shapley value phi i is defined as c some constant c times the sum of over all subsets s in n minus i of 1 over n minus 1 choose the size of s times v of s union i minus v of s. And you can see that this is exactly equal to Shapley values if c is equal to 1 over n. Unfortunately, to calculate this exactly, you have to train the model on every subset of the data. And this is exponential in time. So the authors pro provide some estimation methods. They provide two ways of approximating the Shapley values themselves. The first is a Monte Carlo method. So rather than using every subset in N, you can pull a random set of subsets. And the second is a truncation method, where if you are adding data points to a subset and the performance metric doesn't change, then you can stop adding, continuing to add values and set the Shapley values for the rest of the data points to zero. You can also approximate the value function. So with many machine learning methods, training over a data set can take a really long time. So the authors present two different options for approximating the value function. The first is gradient Shapley and applies when 
the learning method uses stochastic gradient descent. Rather than training to convergence, you can train for a single epoch and do a single gradient update and use that as the value function. Another option is to evaluate groups of points at once rather than evaluating a single point at a time. So authors run some experiments and they show a few different properties, experimental properties. The first is that removing data with high Shapley values decreases the model performance. Conversely, removing data with low Shapley values increases model performance. Similarly, adding data that's similar to data with high Shapley values increases model performance and adding data similar to data with low Shapley values decreases model performance. Mislabeled data is likely to have low Shapley values and noisy data is also likely to have low Shapley values. So you can see how these values could be used. You can go through data points with low values to look for mislabeled data or noisy data. You might want to collect data that is more like data with high values to increase their model performance, or you might want to collect data that's more like data with low values, which may decrease your model performance, but increase the performance on data that might be outliers or noisy. Some limitations of this method. As I mentioned, this is very computationally expensive Doing an exact calculation is exponential in terms of the number of data points. And even with approximation methods, it's still very computationally expensive. Another limitation is that this only works for a fixed data set. You can't calculate a value for a new point without recalculating the values for the rest of the data set.